Hi and welcome back to another Guide to SolidWorks uh, tutorial. Now today we are going to look at taking our assembly from our nut bottom washer that we've done in the past and we are going to create an exploded view of this assembly and then we are going to move in to actually create an assembly drawing from it and uh, we'll go through that whole process. So. Like normal, if you're new to the channel, please uh, subscribe. So if this is the first time you're watching, hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoy the content, please give us a big thumbs up and a like as we're going through. Um, so first of all, let's get started. I'm going to take this assembly. Um, and if you're not sure how to get to this, I'll put a link in the top corner on how to create these models in this assembly. Um, feel free to pop and have a look. And then once I've taken this assembly, I'm going to turn it into an exploded view, uh, which I'll take you through step by step, uh, just a very basic one. And then I'm going to turn it into an assembly drawing. So we'll move over onto that in a second. So let's start with the exploded view first. So exploded view, if we go into the assembly tab and go to exploded view here, we can just click on the bottom there. Now we're going to do a step by step exploded view. So the first process here is going to be clicking on one component that I want to explode. So I'm going to click on there and I am going to pull that out. Now when we're doing this, we've got to think about the order in which we're extending. Uh, now I can drag it out to a distance or I can type in how far I want it to go there. So if I type in, um, say, 40, that will move it. 40 from its original position showing you how it's projected along and then when i'm happy with the movement of that single component i will click done okay and i'll show you again with the next component so i'm going to move this washer next so what that's done it's kept me in here but it's saved that first step at the top so again i'm going to go and i'm going to click on my next component i want to explode out now um, I didn't explain this with the first one, but following with the second one here, you get this um, sort of hologram that you can tick on here. So these actions, um, any one that you click on is the direction you're going to move it. And if you hit the circle one, it means you can rotate the component around. Now, obviously, we move the nut out in the um, Y axis. So I'm going to also want to move the washer out in the Y axis as well. So I'm going to drag that along pull that out and I'm going to drop it around there and I'm just going to turn that to 50 so it's a nice set distance out like I said you can do this by eye or you can set your distances it doesn't matter too much once I've got that set up um, uh, I've got my explosion of my components just clicked on there and we've got that explosion of the components in line with each other like so now, once I'm happy, I've got them in position. I'm just going to tick there, like so. I'm going to put this into um, a view that I am happy with. Let's get it from that view. There. From there. Ah, there we go. We'll have that one. That's nice. So what we've got there is the view along the line there. Now, uh, at this point, what I need to do is save this. Okay. If I pro progress on from here without saving, it won't pick up my exploded view when I move over to my drawing. So I'm just going to go to file and I'm just going to go to save there. Okay. <clears throat> now, once I've saved that, I'm going to go to file and I'm going to make a drawing from assembly. Okay, now if I don't have the one that I want here, um, it's the A4, so I've got a, a portrait version there of A4. I can go to browse and I can come down and I can find the A4 landscape. Now I'm just going to use a standard SolidWorks template. I'm not going to create my own today, but you can create your own custom templates. I'll go through that in a different video. Um, once I've selected the one that I want, so just an A4 landscape, Okay there. And now what I've got here is the D 
different views of my component. So at the moment, I've got an isometric exploded view right down at the bottom. Now, because I have come in directly from the drawing, it's loaded this up down the side. If I've come in not directly from the model, then I would need to search for it, hit browse, and search for it in my files. So that's where it would be hiding. Um, now I've got these. These all, all these different views help me to create the orthographic projection drawings, but I am only interested in assembly. So I'm going to nick this isometric exploded view from the bottom here. I'm going to drop that in there, like so. Okay, so at the moment, this is quite uh, small compared to the page. So I'm going to exp um, change the scale of this component. And there's two ways I can do that. I can do it on this sidebar over here. This is all the information about the drawing. So if I want to display the drawing in a different style, I can click over here and I can have it as a solid lines. I can have it solid lines with hidden detail applied. I can have it just as solid with no de hidden detail. I can have it as solid with my gray scale effect, or I can have it solid without the uh, lines in there. So I get a choice. I always prefer when I'm doing assemblies to have it in that one. Um, we've got all the different um, details here. So we've got draft quality, we've got high quality, and we can change all the qualities. Um, dimension type, we can have the projection or true dimensions. So it's completely up to us. We can change these to how we need it or how we want it. Uh, and we've got more properties again down at the bottom where we can flip through and set them. Um, you'll only really need these if you go into really advanced model and, and assembly. So don't worry about these for now. Um, I did say though, we can scale this up. So the first one way we can do it is if I'm using the sheet scale, if I come down to the bottom here, it gives me the sheet scale. So I can change it here. So if I want to decrease the size, knock it down to one to five, if I want to increase the size and go up like so. Okay. Now, if I find that there isn't any that fit directly into what I want, in this case, probably one to one is perfect, but if there isn't one that fits into what I wanted, I go to custom scale here and I can go into here. I've got the same options as before, but if I drag it up slightly, I've got user defined. And in there, I can type whatever scale I want. So I'm just gonna go one to one, which it is anyway at the moment and tick there. Okay, so that's my user defined scale. Once I've got my scale to this, I've now got it laid out how I want it. I can now um, add in balloons. Now balloons is just identifying the components. So if I go over to annotation here and I come up to balloons, I'm gonna add my balloons in manually. Now I can do it automatic with the click of a button. Or if I go to balloons there, I can, ha I can set them up manually. Now this will put the balloon arrow exactly where I want it. So I'm gonna go one there, two there, and three there. So I've got my three balloons in there. Okay, they're just highlighting each component and that is set a numerical value to each of the components. So that when I introduce a bill of materials, you'll be able to identify what the name of the component is related to um, the value. So now we've got our uh, balloons in there. Let's put a bill of materials in. So bill of materials. So we go to uh, stay in annotation, go over to tables. And we've got a wide range of different tables we can use. Now I am interested in bill of materials. So bill of materials. And I have here my component. Now, because it's already selected, it's automatically come up. If that wasn't selected, so let me show you again. 
table bill of materials. If it's not selected here, it's asking me to select what I want to use for my bill of materials. So I just click anywhere on the drawing and I'll be fine with that. I can then change the information here that's going to be in my bill of materials table. I'm just going to go for the basics, which is um, what the automatic setup is. Tick here and I'm going to drop this in. Now, all I want to make sure is that it's not interfering with my drawing. So I'm just going to put it there above the template at the bottom. Now, it's up to me how much you have in here. I can change the size of it. I can increase the size, decrease the size. I can even modify the table here. So for instance, if I didn't want the description, right click on the description, delete column, and it'll change that. It just gives me a bit more space. It depends what I want in there. Um, I can also then again um, insert, so I can insert more stuff in there. So if I go insert something to the right, it'll insert the extra column uh, back in there. And then I can again, just fill that in with whatever I need. But keeping it nice and neat, let's remove that. We'll keep that nice and neat in the corner there. Okay, so that is it really. That's how we create a exploded view assembly um, using a bill of, and including a bill of materials. Um, if you enjoyed the content, please give us a big thumbs up and I'm going to be putting some more content on again around the basics around creating drawings. So the next one is going to be around creating orthographic drawings. Um, so yeah, so I will see you in the next video. Uh, thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye now.